welcome to Monet Cafe, your very own virtual art studio where you can learn about pastel painting and more. Beginners, you're gonna love this lesson. Hello, artists, and welcome to Monet Cafe. I'm artist Susan Jenkins, and I'm glad you've joined me here in the studio today because I'm gonna be focusing on a painting lesson that is beginner focused. And I know that many of my beginner lessons get a lot of attention. And I think that's because many people visit this channel, thank you, Lord, uh, that are brand new to art, especially pastel painting. And so I think beginners are hungry to get some of the basics. And um, this lesson should give you that. And also, as always, we'll have lots of fun. So grab yourself a cup of coffee, get in your painting zone, and let's get started right now. The reference image I'll be using will be accessible to you from pmp-art.com. It's a great site for copyright-free reference images. And the theme this month in Monet Cafe and on my Patreon page is nocturne paintings or night paintings. Let's talk about the products in this lesson. And I tried to keep all the products budget-friendly with beginners in mind. I'll be using this Strathmore toned gray paper. I like a gray surface because I can use white. And the charcoal pencils I'm using for my sketch are by Derwent. I have a light, a medium, a dark, and a white. Also, if you're looking for a great way to sharpen pastel or charcoal pencils, this brass pencil sharpener is excellent by Mobius and Rupert. I'll share a link in the description. I also recommend you get the replacement blades. Keeping them sharp is important. Now, I love to use these pre-cut mats, like for frames. I've just flipped it over here. They're great for getting standard sizes. The inside of this is five by seven and the outside is eight by 10. You'll see me using the outside dimensions as well. I'll be using a very affordable and a new to me set of soft pastels. These are 48 soft pastels made by Artix. And thank you to Artix for donating this set for my product review video. I must say I was quite pleased and also very pleased with the price. As of the making of this video, it was a great deal on Amazon. I used this set exclusively for the painting tutorial except for two other colors. And for the final pastel painting, the surface I'll be using is made by Art Spectrum. It's called Color Fix. They have a cool pack and a warm pack and they sell individual sheets as well. But I love these packs. I decided to use a warm color, believe it or not. The reference image is a night, very cool scene. And I thought a warm color would make a nice complementary color. Um, to serve kind of as an underpainting of sorts um, for the beautiful, cool colors to rest upon. This is the color I chose. I'd really appreciate it if you would go ahead and like this video. Also, subscribe to this channel. I notice 66% of you are continuously watching my videos and you haven't yet subscribed. So go ahead and click that button right now. I'd also love it if you would support this channel over on my Patreon page. It's only $5 a month. You can cancel it anytime and you get the extended real-time footage of many of my videos plus extra goodies. There will be three stages to this painting process. The first is a value study, so important. We're just using limited values to create a little study. I can't tell you what a great foundation this is for beginning a painting. And this content is sped up a bit. Um, this is an example of what I was saying for my patrons on my Patreon page. They will have the real-time full version with extra commentary, but you're still gonna get a lot here. Don't worry, Monet Cafe. For this value study, I basically just sketched in my big shapes. That's really just the large shapes that you see. You wanna keep this so simple at this point. And I'm using my medium value charcoal pencil. You could also do this with markers, regular pencil, and you can get different values by just pressing harder. So the reason I'm using the middle value is I wanna get everything other than the darkest darks and the lightest lights. So now I'm just using my finger to blend in a bit. And those are what I would say are my middle values. Now I'm gonna use my dark charcoal pencil to get in my darkest values. And 
almost always in a landscape painting, your vertical elements, such as your trees, are going to have dark values. And in this scene, it was it was really dark anyway. I, I lightened it up, changed some of the colors. Um, but it looked like it was mostly just um, trees and their reflections on a river. I decided to make it more like a, a meandering um, river or marsh scene, and I actually gave it banks of land on the sides. So I just broke out my artistic license and changed the composition a bit. But here you can see I've gotten in most of my darker shapes. I decided to add a few little elements. They're kind of in the photo anyway, just to lead the eye in. Not too much, just a hint. You don't want to get the viewer too hung up on the entryway of the painting, but just give them a nice little lead in. So those are my darkest darks. Um, I added a little bit more dark to the upper part of the sky there. And uh, this is my lightest charcoal pencil. I'm just using it to kind of connect the sky. And now I have one more value, right? Because I'm using this gray paper, I can use white. That's one of the advantages of using gray paper. If I was using white paper, this wouldn't even show up. So I changed the position of the moon. And the reason is because I wanted to get it in the reflection of the water. And with my newly designed composition, um, I wanted it to fall um, kind of where that water was in the lower left corner. So now I've got in my value study. The great thing about a value study is you've already... Um, really got in practice one time. Uh, I'm giving a little bit of uh, a design to the edge of the waterway. You want to avoid curves in water and roads. I added a few stars and there it is, my little value study that I'll actually use for other paintings. So hang on to those value studies and you can reuse them for future pieces. And now stage two is a color study and this helps you to determine your color palette. Now I'm going to use the outside edge of this mat that I used before. The inside edge was 5 by 7. The outside edge is 8 by 10. And I'm going to create my color study also on this Strathmore Gray Tones paper. Now, you've already seen me do the sketch once, so I'm really speeding this one up. And then I will start adding some pastels. All right, there it is, a very simple sketch, simple composition, and we're ready to add some color. And here is where I'm using, for the first time, Artix Soft Pastels. It's 48 colors. The colors are great. I thought they were awesome for a night scene. And it's really neat. They have the color numbers and the name Artix embossed right there on the stick. I I've never seen that before. That was so cool. It comes with a little uh, color guide, kind of like this little thin piece of paper here with all of the numbers. And I'm just going to tell you right away, I was really pleased with the quality of these pastels for the price. I think they're normally around $40, and uh, for the set, that's less than a dollar a stick. Wow. Um, so now I'm just applying it to unsanded paper. If you've been painting with pastels long, you know that I... Uh, brag a lot about sanded surfaces. You can get so many more layers on sanded surfaces, but unsanded papers are more affordable and they're great for color studies. Um, I also like to create full final pastel paintings on unsanded paper. I've learned more about how to use them, um, some techniques over the years. But this is great for this color study. And what I'm doing now is I'm just experimenting with these pastels because I had never used them. And I'm working out my color palette. And these three stages that I'm talking about in this video, stage one, a value study, stage two, a color study, eventually leading to stage three, your final painting, is truly going to make your final painting be a painting that you're way more pleased with than if you just jump in and don't have any um, precursory efforts. Um, it Every time I do this, my paintings are always better. The final painting is always better. So I'm just getting in. It might seem weird that I put magenta for those trees, but I wanted to get in a little bit of warmth underneath those big shapes. And now I'll layer a darker value over these big tree shapes. Um, this was one of the darker colors in the Arctic set. And as I mentioned, I used two other pastels that are not in the set, and they're both just darker pastels. One of them is the one you just saw me grab. Um, it's a really dark blue, and it's from the Paul Rubens 
40 set of soft pastels. Now, I'm just blending with my finger here. You saw me earlier blend with a paper towel. Paper towels work great for blending um, on unsanded surfaces. Now, this is sped up substantially uh, for the Monet Cafe version. My patrons on my Patreon page will have um, slower speeds and additional commentary for this color study section. But you should be able to get the idea here uh, on Monet Cafe. I'm basically just um, working the colors and seeing kind of how I want to approach this. And when I do a color study before a painting, uh, I find that I learn a lot. I And what I learned with this one was I liked the warm tones that it had in the reference image of kind of some orange and red uh, colors in the distance. But after creating this, I liked it. Um, when I went on to the final painting, you'll see I choose a color palette that's even cooler. I just really wanted to embrace that night feeling. Um, so that's an advantage totally of doing a color study. Um, and again, you've already created this now two times, so you know your final is going to be better. So that was fun and it's nice and loose. And when I go on to the final painting, I keep my um, value study, the one right there to the right, I keep it next to me and I take this painting and I sit it on a shelf over to my right so that I can, you can see it here, so that I can see both of them while I paint. And now the surface I'll be using is a pastel painting surface made by Art Spectrum. It's called Color Fix. It comes in individual sheets, but I love these packs, a cool pack and a warm pack. And believe it or not, even though my scene, I told you I'm going to make it even cooler um, in color temperature, I'm choosing a warm tone. I almost used that red I just pointed at, but I really loved this terracotta color. I can't remember the exact name of it um, in the warm pack, but um, it's really great to use these tone surfaces because you already have, I don't like working on white, white surfaces. You already have a nice tone to begin with. And it has an influence on your final painting. So now I'm getting my sketch in again, a third time. Um, so, you know, repetition is the mother of learning. So when you do something over and over again, you're obviously gonna get better and better at it. And now that I've worked this sketch now for the third time, I know where my um, marshy banks are and um, keeping those little jagged edges to the waterline and giving a bit more gesture now to my tree. I liked how it was kind of curving backwards, like it was looking at the moon. And I just love to personify elements in my painting. Now, I am adding this beautiful blue. It's a darker blue that's in the Artix Soft Pastel set. And I'm doing a similar principle to what I did with the value study. I'm just getting in my middle values. And uh, I know that I'm going to add um, my darkest values for that main tree, of course. I'm giving a little bit of this pretty teal or turquoisey blue to the sky and the water. Remember, we wanna reflect whatever's in the sky is going to reflect down into the water. This is just a paper towel. I needed to soften um, the first layer. Often when you're working on sanded surfaces, it can be a bit textural and um, the pastels feel like they they rub off very easily, um, but that tends to solve itself when you get a layer down. And so that's why I often like to go ahead and blend the first layer. Now I'm using, I mentioned that I used exclusively this Artix, Artix 48 set of soft pastels with the exception of two other colors. This is one of them. It is the dark blue that's in the Paul Rubens 40 set of pastels. It has a couple of nice darks in there. The Arctic set had some darks, but the darkest dark wasn't quite dark enough for a night scene. And so you can see here how I'm just doing my same paper towel method, getting it blended in. Um, those distant trees ended up being a little bit too light. So you'll see me darken those in a little while. Now I'm just shaping this tree a little bit more. I'm gonna come back towards the end of the painting and carve out what's called the sky holes. Often with trees, we paint negatively. We, instead of painting each branch and leaf 
um, as a positive shape, we often like to carve the sky into those shapes. Um, it creates so much more of a painterly look. You'll see me do some of that towards the end. Now down at the waterline where those uh, grasses are, it's often a little bit darker down um, closer to the water and especially on that curve right where I'm working now that's curving around. The light source is the moon and the sky is lighter in that area. So um, that's another thing you want to keep in mind when you're painting. Now you saw how I darkened those background trees, not quite as dark as the foreground tree. Keep in mind values get lighter as they go into the distance and colors get cooler. Um, the temperature gets cooler. Here you can see me doing that negative painting I mentioned with this pretty blue. All right, you see now how things are layering a little bit better because I blended in that first layer. And what did I say? Whatever's in the sky is going to get reflected in the water. So that's why I keep working back and forth from sky to water. They need to be harmonious. That's what happens in real life. So here I go again. If I put it in the sky, I'm going to add it to the water. Isn't this a gorgeous color? Um, like I often say, I liked many stages of this. I, I typically like um, an unfinished stage, usually about three quarters of the way into the painting. Um, but I, I keep working and having fun. I, I really do enjoy the painting process. But um, I, I'm going to try to limit myself in time with uh, some of the videos I have coming in the future and keep that kind of unfinished look. Now you see how these blues are starting to work together, um, adding a little bit of that pretty blue. Remember I said I was going to lighten up the value of those trees just a little so they feel further away. Now I'm using my finger to pull down um, the dark areas in the grasses. What that does is it causes a reflection. That's what happens with reflections. They typically just are kind of um, downward, darker shapes, and they look real moody. So the finger method works great. I loved adding some of this pretty kind of periwinkle blue. It's in between a blue and a purple, one of my favorite colors. And they have a gorgeous, uh, this color in this set is a really beautiful periwinkle color. Again, echoing the color from the sky into the water. Look at that gorgeous in between a purple and a magenta. Oh my goodness. It's a warm, a very warm purple. Same thing, pulling it into the water. And this is getting that nice night moody feel. Remember how I said in the color study, uh, I was able to determine that I wanted this to feel more like night and not have that warm glow coming behind those trees in the distance. So instead, I used magentas and pinks. Um, those are not as warm as reds and yellows. So it kept it kept that night feel. Um, and I really was happy with the color palette. Now back to the stages again the importance of stage one, stage two, and stage three. Um, hopefully you're getting the idea here, which is stage one is so crucial, establishing your values. If you get your values correct, you can get very creative with color. You don't have to even use the colors that are in the reference image, what's called local color, the colors that you see. Oh, I really liked this pretty kind of a uh, uh, neutral green, really doled out green. And I thought it was a great color to just give a hint of maybe the fact that they're, you know, these are green elements. It just happens to be nighttime. So we're not going to have any bright or warm greens. So again, getting value right with stage one, very crucial. You know, I, I've just, I know what my values are now. And then getting the color study done for stage two just really helped me get an idea of where I wanted to take this painting with color. Uh, and now I'm starting to have fun. Okay, so another thing you'll notice here is uh, because I'm working on the sanded surface, the Art Spectrum Color Fix uh, sanded paper, literally, if you're brand new to pastel, it feels a little like sandpaper. And that's what causes your pastels to get layers, multiple layers, and to cause those colors to interact with each other without getting muddy. Oh, isn't this a pretty blue? Added some of that down by the, the grasses and in the cooler sides of the grasses. Um, so I was very pleased that... Um, well, I've used this Art Spectrum Color Fix paper before. I know it gets great layering. But the Artix 
pastels. Again, this is the first time I'm using these pastels. Look how many layers I'm getting. I would say it is a soft pastel, maybe leaning a little more towards medium hardness. I'm talking about the range of softness to hardness. Uh, with different brands of pastels, um, the softest pastels are like the um, Schmincke, Sennelier, um, even Terry Ludwig pastels. Medium pastels are... Um, I would say more of the Rembrandt. They're they're medium to hard. Um, I'd say medium to soft would be Unison, um, Jack Richardson, and I would say these are these are soft, leaning a little bit to the medium hardness. Um, so even though I'm saying this is a great starter set for beginners, I, I'm just going to say beginners, you can't go wrong with the set. It is archival, meaning it's not going to fade. It's light fast. Um, you're going to you're going to be pleased with the layers you can get. And uh, here I'm doing a little more negative painting. But you're really going to be pleased with the price. I know when you're first starting out with pastel painting, um, these things can get expensive. So yes, two thumbs up for a beginner set. But also, whatever level you are, I would buy the set. I mean, I got it donated to me, but I totally buy this set. Um, they work great. So now I'm just getting in. I've done this before, again, twice. A little little sliver of a moon I wanted the moon to be just barely there and again I moved the moon because I wanted it to have a reflection in the water and uh, it worked now with this composition if I'd have put it over to the other side I wouldn't have had the reflection in the water so now's where I'm adding my brightest brights my highest contrast with my whites um, punching it up a little bit with color this is when I usually have fun I start going okay let's add my punchy color and my highest contrast with value and color color contrast as well so adding a little bit of that glimmer in the water and um, now I'm negatively painting amongst or into the marshy grasses and towards the final stages you can actually do horizontal marks across the water and it really makes it feel flat I added a, a color I would typically not go so light behind those trees, but I wanted a little bit of sparkle, so I thought that was fun. Um, so here is the final, and uh, again, it is sped up a bit on the Monet Cafe version. If you want the real-time version, uh, consider becoming a patron. It's only $5 a month, and that's how I'm able to keep these videos coming on the Monet Cafe channel. So uh, God bless you all. Subscribe if you haven't already. Become a patron and join the Monet Cafe art group on Facebook. Feel free to share your recreations on Facebook or Instagram and be sure to tag me so I see them. All right, everyone. God bless and happy painting.